All right, so a few weeks ago, or about two weeks ago, I'll say I failed the AWS Solutions Architect. It's been a while since that's happened to me. It's been a while since I failed a certification. Last time I failed a certification was the CompTIA CYSA Plus. So in my entire career, I've only failed three certifications. My first ever one, which is the CompTIA A Plus, I failed my first attempt and I passed my second attempt. My second one that I failed was the CompTIA CYSA Plus. I failed my first attempt and I passed my second attempt. And the third one so far has been been the AWS Solutions Architect. I failed my first attempt, but thankfully I passed my second attempt earlier this week and I'm making another video about how to pass the exam. But this is a video specifically for why I failed the exam. First and foremost, I think I did a great job of preparing for the exam. So I started using um, Adrian Contril's course. And let me tell you, Adrian Contril is amazing. Great teacher, great graphics, very in-depth. It would take you a long time. Matter of fact, it took me quite a while to get through his course, but it was very great. Um, helped me out a lot with like really practicing and conceptualizing AWS concepts and tools and services and all that stuff. So it was great. Definitely recommend Adrian Control. And then when he got to practice exams, I kind of lost my momentum there. That was the main thing that caused me to stumble, I'll say. So essentially what had happened was I got these Tutorials Dojo practice exams on their platform. And I, I don't like speaking ill of platforms or companies because that's their brand, you know, and all that stuff. But I must say that their platform, although it's great, you know, with, with practice exams, they have all these different practice exams, like up to like 30 or so of them. It's like the timed ones, the ones by services. There's different versions of it, but 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 literally the first couple of days when i was trying to do practice exams on their platform i could not for the life of me get my work to save like i'll take a practice exam and then next one i know my exam attempt did not save and that just kind of discouraged me like i i did that a couple of times and i was like dude like i'm just trying to get practice exams done and after a couple of attempts of that happening i just like kind of put it to the side i was like you know what it's whatever and that first and foremost delayed me actually trying to test myself on the exam and secondly it kind of made me lose motivation now i'm not blaming tutorial jojo for this but it it's like I was I had so much momentum up to that point that I took the practice exams that like that just kind of like ruined everything. But I would say this. I think they're, they have a great platform, but they need to do something about how their practice exams work like on the platform. Like you can be talking about like AWS and sessions and, you know, and storing sessions and ensuring that, you know, the users are able to come back to their session and and allow my practice exam to not be saved during my testing session like that is just horrible so what i did instead was i eventually went to udemy to get their practice exam on udemy right so they have their platform but they also have the practice exams on udemy right and personally i've been so accustomed to udemy with regards to taking practice exams and i have taken the practice exams for a lot of my previous certifications from udemy i figured i'll just go look for the practice exams on, on udemy and i found them Matter of fact, funny enough, I had actually bought them like two or three years ago, so I, I didn't even have to pay for them on Udemy. So I just used the Udemy practice exams. By this point, I had kind of lost my motivation. I think I also kind of underestimated the exams. So I only did, I think I did one practice exam, maybe two, and I didn't even really do that well in them. So like, I was just like, you know what? I'll be fine. Like, I'm, I'm done putting this exam to the side because I, I, I kept rescheduling it. And then I took the exam and yeah, I failed by 21 points. I'm going to leave the image up on the screen here. You're going to see like my score was 699. And um, if you look at the performance, I met competency for only domain one and two and the remaining two, I did not meet competency. Yeah, it was devastating, but I decided to like attempt it again, you know, just put a little bit more effort into kind of cover my bases and the things that I missed out on, on the previous exams. And, and I passed the second attempt. And by the time you're watching this video, I should be posting the video about how I passed soon. So if you want to watch that, if it's out, you can check out the video on this side of the screen. And and if it's not out, then just check out this video on the left of the screen. If you're looking to sit for the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, I took that a couple of years ago. So I have some tips there that will help you with passing that on your first attempt. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.